And I'll tell you what, I think that is a great integration discussion leading into our grab bag here this week, which is pitch anything. So you have all your leads loaded in essentially to your sweet CRM. You're going to go in, you're going to say, all right, who am I meeting with today? What am I pitching? You know, I have what I need to pitch to them. And what am I going to go in and say? How's this going to work? What are the fundamentals? So I, I'm going to go look up the author right now here. I forget the guy's name. Oren Clough, I believe. Yeah, Oren Clough uh, wrote a book on Pitch Anything. Essentially, here's the big idea in 76 words. And this comes straight from the book. So don't mind me just reading it right off. But I loved it. The intro for this, again, felt like you did a great job. Here's the big idea. 76 words. All right. There's a fundamental disconnect between the way we pitch anything and the way it's received by our audience. As a result, at a crucial moment, at the crucial moment, when it is most important to be convincing, nine out of 10 times, we are not. Our most important messages have a surprisingly low chance of getting through. And he kind of goes into, as it turns out, pitching is one of those business skills that depends heavily on the method you use and not how hard you try. So the whole book goes into framing uh, some methods to use and kind of how our brain works and uh, just kind of a dive into a little bit of all of those. But really what I absolutely loved was the way he describes our brain, because I never really thought about it. I'm not a neuroscience guy. I don't, you know how my brain works. I, I, basically, I know there are two hemif- hemispheres, right? I know there's a left side and a right side. Sure, fine. That's kind of my limit to my knowledge. Well, he goes into depth here on essentially how, the evolution of how your brain has evolved. And there's three steps. And he has this great picture in the book. Of course, I don't have it on the show notes. But if you think of your brain, uh, think of it from kind of like the brain stem out, um, basically. So what's going to be closest to that brain stem is what he calls the crocodile brain. And this crocodile brain is responsible for the initial filtering of all incoming messages. It generates most survival flight or flight responses and produces basic responses. This is basically saying, do I kill this thing or do I mate with it? It's, yeah, it's very I like, I basic like how emotions. He puts it- I like how he puts it here, strong, basic emotions, right? I usually, and I probably got it from someone who got it from this book, but I usually refer to that as my lizard brain, right? But yeah, I, lizard I do, brain, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I do like how he says it here. You know, it generates most survival flight or fri- flight. F- it generates most survival fight or flight responses, and it produces strong, basic emotions. So he's got that. He's got that. I'm just going to go through the next two here. Uh, He says the mid-level, it basically determines the meaning of things and social situations, which is fine. And then you have your neocortex. So he kind of skips over mid-brain. I think the two important ones here are crocodile and neocortex. And then this neocortex is basically your evolved problem-solving ability, and it's able to think about complex issues and produce answers using reason. So pitches are sent from the modern and smart part of the brain the neocortex but (laughs) here you go they're received by the part of the brain that is more than five million years old and it's not as bright so basically what's coming out of your mouth is coming from that why the your neocortex how they're receiving it is do i fight this thing or do i run away from it so i never thought about it like that you always think all right get these people essentially on the same wavelength, fine, and then pitch them the idea, which I guess kind of you have to go through the center to get to the outer side of it. But I, for some reason, had never broken down those kind of barriers and put that together. So it just kind of opened it, opened my eyes up at least to it. Uh, and then he goes into, uh, he has this acronym for STRONG. It's a lot about how he describes framing, which is setting the frame, telling the story, revealing the intrigue, offering the prize, nailing the hook point, and getting a decision. So there are a couple things in there that I'll go over. But essentially, no situation has real meaning until you frame it. So you, And what he means by this is people are always trying to impose frames on one another. They're essentially trying to get you to believe or get their point of view. And then once you have their point of view, they can kind of sell you on 
sell you or tell you essentially how they want you to act. So in this case, it would be like a like invest, um, or why their product, why why essentially why you're basically gonna follow in their frame of mind and uh he has a couple examples that are great it's um before i get into them i do want to explain the frames here so there's the power frame the time frame and the analyst frame uh essentially with the power frame it's base it's status it's you walk in to an off a sales you walk in as a salesperson to an office where they're they're gonna listen to you. They gave you the time. Basically, they have the power. Their assistant walks out and says, "You have to wait. You're forced to sit in a chair. Basically, you're the low man on the pole right now. It's their time, not yours. Uh, so that's kind of the power frame. The time frame. Time frames are often used by your target to uh, rechallenge your frame by disrupting you and in the moment of confusion unwittingly take back control this one was kind of an odd one um essentially what it does it says it, it's similar to the power frame in that what happens is they'll say you have 20 minutes and then they'll walk in 15 minutes late so it's really you have five so they're displaying the power on you basically saying you're, you're not worth my time and they're kind of showing that time crunch like look i have not 10 to 10 30 anymore i have 10 25 to 10 30 and you have to go in five minutes and get all your work get as much as you can out and pitch me why in this amount of time uh and then the last one there there are two more here the intrigue frame which is basically how many times have you been giving a presentation when suddenly one or more people in the room take a deep dive into technical details analyst frame i love it it happens all the time <laughs> yeah, people want to immediately dive you're trying to just pitch an idea and people are telling you like eight different things on how to do it it's like wait hang on we just need to know if you're interested or not but at that point at least they're buying in um at that technical level and then the last one here is the prizing frame and Prizing may be one of the better ones. It's basically a way to deal with threatening and fast approaching frames that are likely to push you to a low status. Basically, you have to push them to say, you know, we the hum, humans have a few basic emotions. Uh, they we choose that we chase that which moves away from us. We want what we can't have, and we only place value on the things that are difficult to obtain. So basically, by using these three things as in our prizing frame we're making them want to chase us instead of us having to chase after them so i thought that one was the most interesting so um, as far as as far as context right how does this relate to our uh neocortex talking to their crocodile brain because I, I i think that's that's kind of where yeah i i miss the that context switch yeah yeah uh, so essentially when you walk into a room, you're, if you're the salesperson, I'll say, mm -hmm. and the other person is the buyer, we'll say you have, you're walking in with all the information right there, right? You have all the information and they don't, they don't know what you're doing. They don't know if you're a friend or you're a foe. Obviously you're wanting to take their money. They're probably going to think, all right, what does, you know, who is this? Why, uh, I'm not going to say they're afraid of you, but they're not going to want, they're, they're going to be essentially closed off at that base level, right? They don't know whether you're, like I said, a friend or a foe. So they have to, you have to break that crocodile brain to get to their midbrain to say, all right, we're in the social situation now. Obviously they're not trying to hurt me. They're just a sale. You know, they just want to come in and talk about their idea. They want some money. Then you have to go essentially he says by telling a story you get to that you break them you break the uh hard shell at the beginning and then you kind of penetrate into the uh the upper levels yeah. and the midbrain so is that and is that setting get, the frame there in that strong acronym is is that the first way you can right, even start right, looking at right and then when right. when you when you get to the t part of strong you then you start telling the story to their Tell, midbrain yep is it, okay all right so that's the, exactly the, right, and all these all these frames here um, are just the first the different part, types, 
they're yeah. basically the different types that are out there. And then he provides in the book ways to bust them. Um, I won't go too much into them. Basically, there's those methods, and then there are counter arguments to use against them. Essentially, the, if someone's yeah, pulling them so on this, you. All of this, uh, this framing, right, is is really what you need to crack the shell in order to really get to the the meat of the conversation. Correct. Okay. Correct. Right. And then I did want to provide his kind of structure here mm-hmm. for the pitch. Um, basically, first five minutes, introduce yourself. Next. So it's so a 20 minute that, pitch. I, I don't want to. Yeah. yeah, it's a 20 minute pitch. He says, if you can't do it in 20 minutes, then you don't know what you're talking about. Or sure. uh, basically, you don't have a firm grasp on what you're doing. Uh, introduce yourself as the first five minutes. Right. Start with a track record of success. It's vo- it's vitally important that your target knows your idea is new, emerging from current market opportunities, and that's not some relic left from bygone days. I, I did love that nugget he had in there. Explain the budget and the secret sauce. Uh, it takes 10 minutes. Basically, in phase two, it gets harder to hold. You're, you're now kind of, you can't lose them, right? You have to hold their attention. You have to explain what problems the big idea really is or really solves and how it works and then what the opportunities are and this is kind of where they shell back into that crock brain uh they can if they say okay look you know you're gonna throw 20 million dollars or whatever away onto this they don't that's fear right there you're gonna just incite fear in them they're not gonna like that they're gonna shell off so I'm gonna I'm gonna um, come back to the strong acronym because I I actually like this a lot I I think this is a yeah. really good thing to walk through because when when you set the frame that's the yeah. very first thing you're gonna do right uh, and then you have uh, telling the story um, R stands for revealing the intrigue and O offering the prize right and and this is all kind of second step things here because this is this is where you get into the 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 coolness of your product, right? This this is where you get into this is this is why you have to care, right? Because you're 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 simultaneously right. at at the place where you're losing their attention, but you're also at the peak where you can just, you know, jump them up to the next level, get them intrigued, right? Dangle something shiny in front of their face, and you can say, "Hey, this is why you should care." And you trust me, you're going to care a lot once you hear what I have to tell you, right? And you you start yeah. telling them all these things. Yeah, tell storytelling is is huge um intrigue you know it, you, you said it yourself i mean we we chase things that we can't have we want what we cannot have or we chase which moves away with us we want what we can't have we only place value on things that are difficult to obtain so so during that middle point we're going to be wanting to having that intrigue there so that they are chasing that they're you know if if something's running away from them, they they wanna they wanna keep eyes on it, right? They 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 want if if they can't have it, they're they're, they're probably gonna want it because it, it could be beneficial to them. And and offering them that prize is a good way of clinching their their attention in that that second second section there. Yeah. And then basically, in the end, it boils down to telling a story that breaks down the anal- analytical mindset, right? You have to keep them intrigued and interested in what you have to say to win respect so that they want you rather than the other way around. So you have to get them emotionally engaged at the end of the deal, at at the end of the meeting to get the deal. Uh, So it's not enough to be smart or even right. In the end, what matters is how you get your point across to the other person. And there's a lot more to it than you think. So that's what I have to say on that. Uh, Quick hot take on the book, though. He was there was a lot of bragging going on, uh, which was fine. But uh, he did walk through a lot of his own deals and how they operate and how they worked and just kind of how how good he was at times. One of the things uh, I I don't think I agreed with uh, is if we go up to introducing ourselves and the big idea, um, showing how it's vitally important that the target knows that your idea is new emerging from current market opportunities and that it's not some relic left over from bygone days. Uh, Yes and no, in the sense that I don't want someone pitching me something blockchain-y just because I know that's that's not going to work. Yeah, sure, it's in the current market opportunities, but 
it's it's way too early days for that, right? I if I'm if I'm a small business owner, I want something that has a proven track record, right? I want something that's going to be stable that I can rely on not to break while the rest of my business does its own thing, right? Cuz the last thing I need to worry about is IT. And I hear right. that I hear that a lot, you know, why why do I even have to worry about this? Because it's computers, right? So you know, shouldn't computers just be as easy as, as riding a car? You know, as soon as something breaks, I'll hear that analogy. Uh, so I I would disagree with that specifically um, on those terms. Now, it's it's always good to kind of position yourself in a market and say, hey, you know what? With this new tech, we're able to host these, these uh, existing things in a more secure type manner, right? We're able to host it in a more resilient type manner, right? In in a more predictable type manner, right? And we have we have all of these things because of the the groups and, and communities that have worked to put all these tools together, right? And and uh, we're we're bringing all of this open source software uh, together, you know, just because just because we can. Right. Because we, we think this is going to be a benefit. We think you you can benefit from this, you know, uh, and and I'm really interested to see who else we can hook up and, with and, and, and kind of give them the benefit of something that is knock on wood, not going to go wrong. Right. This is this is stuff that, yeah, it's it's in our market. Uh, it's it is taking advantage of, of everything we're uh, we're presented with. But this is. This is something that is reliable and time tested and production ready. Um, so if if you ha- if if anyone listening does have a production issue uh, with their with their IT, give us a call. See if we can help you. Uh, you can sign up on uh, our ourcompose.com homepage. You know that's that's always available. Whether whether you just want to reach out and say hey, um, or whether you're interested in a sweet CRM, um, or in an accounting service, or Nextcloud, um, or Camboard, anything, uh, we we are gonna keep adding to our repertoire and and keep growing this just as large as we can. Um, but for now, we hope you enjoyed this episode of our Composecast. Thank you. Be safe, and we'll see you all in two weeks. Bye, everybody.